Welcome to Sports Guy Talking. I am Dustin Tran, your host, as I am here today to talk about Lamar Jackson. An ESPN article was made out a few days ago as Lamar Jackson was left out of the top 10 quarterbacks list. This list was voted by NFL executives, coaches, scouts, and players as Lamar Jackson only garnered an honorable mention. Before I say anything else, though, I want to present you guys with the topic question. So here it is. Is Lamar Jackson underrated? And my answer to that is, heck yeah, he is underrated. Not only is he underrated, he is the most underrated quarterback in the NFL right now. What kind of list is this? How could Lamar Jackson be left out of the top 10? Not only is Lamar Jackson a good quarterback, he's an elite quarterback. Yes, you heard me. He's an elite quarterback. Lamar Jackson is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and to leave him out of any top 10 list is blasphemy. It's blasphemous. I could not believe that Lamar Jackson was left out of a top 10 list. Now, in this list, now, I'm actually going to give a little bit of credit to this list because I actually respect this list somewhat. It's actually pretty good outside the Lamar Jackson part. But here's who they had as their top 10 quarterbacks in this order. They had Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Tom Brady, Joe Burrow, Matthew Stafford, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, and Dak Prescott. Now, I got to admit, that's actually a pretty solid list. It's not bad, though some of the people they ranked, they ranked way too lowly. But overall, solid list. But how could you possibly leave out Lamar Jackson? Lamar Jackson has won an MVP award. Not only has Lamar Jackson won an MVP award, he has also carried his Ravens teams year in and year out. If I was to tell you that Lamar Jackson had a 37-12 and win-loss record, record i guarantee you a lot of people would probably be surprised by that statistic because lamar jackson he's 37 and 12 but geez some people are talking like he's a like he's a 500 quarterback lamar jackson has carried his teams on his back and before somebody says lamar jackson plays with stacked weapons after weapons i'm going to give you some of his names that he's had to work with in the receiving core all right so wide receivers who he had to work with rookie year john brown willie sneed michael crabtree Do those sound like NFL caliber receivers to you? No, they don't. They're not good receivers. All right, let's move on to 2019, the year Lamar Jackson won MVP. He had Marquise Brown, a rookie Marquise Brown. Let's make that clear. Willie Sneed, Seth Roberts, Miles Boykin. I don't know about you, but those don't sound like NFL caliber receivers outside of Marquise Brown. Marquise Brown is the only name I respect, and let's be honest. Marquise Brown is a wide receiver, too, at best, if he was playing in most offenses. He's not a true wide receiver, one. Now let's move on to 2020, the year Lamar Jackson finally won a playoff game. Marquise Brown, Willie Sneed, Miles Boykin, Devin Dumare, and a washed-up Dez Bryant. Those don't sound like proper weapons to me at all. Marquise Brown, he's the only name that I even respect out of these receiving players. I don't respect the other receivers on that list. So that's what Lamar Jackson had to work with at wide receiver. And then this past season... He had Marquise Brown, Rashad Bateman, Sammy Watkins, Devin Dumervay, and James Porch. All right, well, I'll say this about Rashad, Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman, first-round receiver. They did try to give Lamar Jackson some help at receiver, but let's be honest. Rashad Bateman, he's not that good of a receiver. And as for Marquise Brown, like I said, he's a wide receiver too at best, although he actually was solid for them this past season. And Sammy Watkins, please, he couldn't even look that good with Patrick Mahomes' quarterback. Patrick Mahomes, if you guys don't know, is a top two quarterback, top two, top three quarterback in the NFL right now. And as for the other receivers, yeah, I don't really respect them. They're not NFL caliber receivers. And then not only that, the Baltimore Ravens, they traded away Marquise Brown in order to gain an extra first round pick, which they used on a center. So now, their receiving core looks like this for 2022. I'm only going to name out three names because those are the only three that I feel like it's worthy to note. So his number one receiver is Rashad Bateman. That's a freaking joke. Rashad Bateman is a slot receiver. He's a number three wide receiver in most offenses. Then they got Devin Dumerve. I believe that's how you say his name. He's a special teamer. All right, he ain't an actual receiver. The fact that he's a number two receiver, that should already be ringing alarm bells for me. And the third receiver, James Porsche. I think that's how you say his name. Again, He's basically a no neighbor. He's an unknown. So these are some of the receivers that Lamar Jackson has had to work with. Lamar Jackson has carried these receivers on his back. Now, granted, I will say this. He has a nice tight end in Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews, he can actually play. He's pretty good. But other than Mike and Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson has not really had much 
to work with in terms of the passing game, although Marquise Brown is an NFL caliber receiver. And as for that running game that everybody says, oh, Lamar Jackson, he makes impact in the running game. He makes his running backs better too because his running backs throughout his career, the only notable ones I'm even going to note with are Gus Edwards, Mark Ingram, and J.K. Dobbins. Other than that, he don't really have any other running backs that are notable to even point out. Look, in 2021, this guy basically carried an entire team filled with practice squad players. And basically got them in a position where they could have made the playoffs had they won a couple of close games. I mean, look, here were his running backs in 2021. He had Tyson Williams. Okay, he's a practice squad guy. He had Latavius Murray. Who knows how long he's been good. Latavius Murray hasn't been good since like 2017, bro. And Le'Veon Bell. Now, look, I know Le'Veon Bell. Some people are going to say, ooh, Le'Veon Bell. He's got to be one of the best running backs in football, right? No. No, Le'Veon Bell hasn't been good in several years. I think he had Devonta Freeman, who has not even been good since 2016. So these are just some players that Lamar Jackson has had to work with. Lamar Jackson has had to carry this entire Ravens offense, his entire tenure on the Baltimore Ravens. And to look at what he's worked with, compared to what other quarterbacks have had to work with, Lamar Jackson is at a significant disadvantage. Lamar Jackson has had nothing to work with. I know people are going to say, Lamar Jackson, oh, he doesn't throw for enough passing yards. Oh, he his completion percentage. Not good enough. But I'll say this, though, for Lamar Jackson. If you're working with those type of receivers that he's working with, of course you're not going to have a good completion percentage. Those guys are not NFL caliber receivers. All right? Those guys can't play. Lamar Jackson has elevated them numerous times. And that's exactly what he's done. And I also want to talk about some of his rushing stats as well. I know some people are going to say, oh, Lamar Jackson, he's just a running back. Well, I'll say this. In the, in the NFL, in the modern NFL a quarterback has to be able to move outside the pocket, and Lamar Jackson is spectacular at that. Lamar Jackson has rushed for over a thousand yards twice in his NFL career. He's rushed for over five touchdowns in two different seasons. Pretty impressive stuff. And he would have rushed for a thousand yards again last season had he not gotten hurt 12 games into the season. So the fact that Lamar Jackson, what he's done is incredible. He's a special talent, and he's done very well with what he's had to work with. He hasn't had much to work with at all. Maybe if the Baltimore Ravens had given him some top-flight receivers, maybe his numbers would actually look better. But I don't really care too much about his numbers. I look at what the film is telling me. The film is telling me Lamar Jackson is one of the top quarterbacks in the game. His ability to run, his ability to throw a deep ball, and his ability to lead and elevate his players around him. Very impressed with him. I mean, this kind of sounds similar to what Cam Newton had to work with on the Carolina Panthers, where Cam Newton really only had Greg Olson and Steve Smith throughout his career, although Steve Smith was only there for the first three years of Cam Newton's career. But other than that, he didn't really have any other receivers to work with. For the most part, Lamar Jackson, just like Cam Newton, has elevated his receiving core into players that honestly shouldn't be on NFL rosters. Lamar Jackson, just because of that, he has to be the most underrated quarterback in the NFL. That's how I'm looking at it because Lamar Jackson, he elevates his players around him. He wins games more often than not, and he's taking the Ravens to the playoffs three different times. Very impressive stuff. The Ravens, they need to go ahead and pay this guy out because he's one of the top quarterbacks in the game. I personally think that Lamar Jackson's the seventh best quarterback in the game today. I think only Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Josh Allen, and Joe Burrow are the only quarterbacks that are better than Lamar Jackson. No, I did not mis misspeak that. That's exactly what I got to say about Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is an elite quarterback. He's one of the top quarterbacks in the game today. And the fact that he was left out of a top 10 list, that is criminally disrespectful to Lamar Jackson. So that is why Lamar Jackson is the most underrated quarterback in the NFL right now. Remember, go ahead and subscribe to Sports Guy Talking. Like the video and please comment down below. If you guys do that, I may shout you guys out in a future video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Dustin S. Tran and at Sports Guy Talking. Also, go follow me on Twitter at Dustin S. Tran. Again, go ahead and do those things that I just told you guys to go do. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the content that was just produced. Peace out. I hope you enjoyed that video. Want more Sports Guy Talking, the home of great sports content? Make sure you click that subscribe button to get the latest from Sports Guy Talking. Go ahead and like the video. Comment down below. Check the description box on the video in order to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the YouTube channel, Sports Guy Talking.